Hey guys, sorry I haven't been posting much lately because I've been swamped, just absolutely swamped, and I do apologize for that. Um, I've still got to finish off that uh, video to show you guys how to use the ALG Com uh, power supply with the uh, Dude or Zabbix. But uh, in the meantime, this is something which I'm doing immediately. Um, so we all know that there's an issue with the Natonic stuff right now, trying to get a hold of it. Um, this is a way for you to use the Microtech uh, CRS-112-8P. Uh, as a dual voltage um, uh, PoE switch. Now, something to consider with this is that VLANs are done a little differently on here because it doesn't run switch OS, it runs router OS, but it has advanced switching functionality. So it can be a little tricky, and I'll make it a point to do a video on how to do basic VLANs on here, but uh, this is our champion at this point in time, so that you guys know. So the big issue here is, is that, of course, you need dual voltage, right? So if you look on the back of this thing, uh, you've got your, it's separated. It's, it doesn't have a buck boost converter built into it, so it takes 48 and 24 volts in. So the trick that I've done here, which I'll show you. I'll just put it on the floor. Okay, so here. So this is the adapter that I've made, right? So I've just used, because I've got tons of these kicking around. They're very handy. And this switch is actually going in an enclosure outside. So I've got 48 volts coming in here gets tapped off there through the barrel connector, comes up to this buck converter. Now the way that the buck converter is configured is that uh, on the input, this is where the 48 volts comes in, or 54.4, and then uh, travels through, and <laughs> hello kitty, and um, I've got two leads here. The 48 volt is tapped straight off of the input, so it's just a straight pass through, but that the 24 volt output comes off of the output here and I've set the voltage at uh, 26 volts. Now <clears throat> this guy here it claims it's rated for 10 amps. I've tested it out at only 3 amps peak before it crashes. So not a great piece of hardware but the one thing that's kind of important is that the negative is a carry through. So the negative if you test it with the multimeter will beep because it goes straight through the board at the other side. So the positive is the only one that's affected. The positive is the only spot for voltage differential. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up and emphasizing on it is because that's a really important factoid there. If it wasn't, then there's a strong chance that plugging in the barrel connector for this 48 volt and the 24 volt at the same time could either damage the switch or it would cause damage to this. But in this case, this thing works perfectly for this application. So this is literally just a 60 volt peak to 30 volt peak buck converter that you can dial it down to whatever voltage you want. So now let's demo it, okay? So I'm going to plug this in. So we'll put the uh, uh, 48 volt in and uh, 24 volt in. Slider over. Now I haven't coated the board. I'm planning to coat this. It's going to be potted in epoxy or, well, I've got to put a heat sink on it and then I can pot it, but Anyway, I'm potting this in epoxy, and then uh, it's being deployed actually today. So let's power it up now. So here's the PoE that we're using, just a standard 48-volt ubiquity. You could just use a power supply on the other end of this, but you get the idea. There we go. So it's booting up now. These guys do take about 45 seconds to boot fully. All right, she's booting. And now you see here that I've also used an SFP. Because, um, you know, you want to save all these PoE ports, eight precious dual-voltage PoE ports for your devices. And now remember, <clears throat> this isn't uh, like the Natonics where it does LV and VH. <coughs> LV means that it uses two pairs. VH means that it uses four pairs for power. These little guys here are just standard passive PoE. All that they can do is 24 or 48 volts on two pairs, and that's... Um, Let's see, one, two, three, so four, five, seven, and eight. Four, five are positive, seven and eight are negative. Um, sorry, I've got a cold. But this thing will also auto detect what you plug into it. So my first demo is this little uh, uh, 750 hex, what is it? What were they, these things called before? Uh, 750GL. Okay, so if I plug this into one of the ports now at random, there we go you'll see that it lights up green and that this thing boots up. Green means that it's detected 24 volts and it's running at 24 volts. 
All right, now this guy here is a proper 48 volt, does up to 57 volts uh, voltage swing, which is usually your balancing voltage for uh, a DC plant at 48 volts. So let's plug this into a port and you'll see that it went red. Now it went red because it detected that that is 48 volts and it will run it. And of course, because everything's microtech, it's all talks beautifully together, right? <clears throat> so now just to show you, all right, this guy's booting up. That's booting, but let's just to show you so you feel assured that this has been tested to death. You can see data down there, by the way. Watch, I'm just gonna switch these two cables. So now I'm gonna take this one here, the one for the uh, hex, and I'm gonna plug it into the same port that that was just plugged into. All right, and then I will plug this one in uh, over here. So this is the one for the PowerBox Pro, and we will just, uh, there we go, plug that in, and you see it is detecting it. So pretty cool, and yes, you can manually set the voltage, and you can also do forced on, so you can actually say to this port, and typically with Microtech, if you're putting a POA device in it, I like to use forced on, and if it's a passive device, like just a, a laptop or whatever, I'll disable POE specifically on that port, just in case you turn on passive POE while you've got a device connected to it that's not POE, because that can cause poofy, explosion-y type magic smoke to come out, and you don't really want that. So there you go, guys. This is a uh, great little solution. It's very robust and very diverse in its capability. I think that these switches can do 10 gigabits per second backplane, uh, which means that, uh, you know, if you occupy all these SFPs, it can handle it. So perfect for small tower sites, and the price tag on it is not that bad at the MSRP of 179 US. But um, there it is. So all you need is this is simple enough that anybody can do it. See, you've got your output terminals, your input terminals, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's really that easy. And then your 48 volt just taps off of the input, which is 48 volts. So that's all that there is to it. So there you go, folks. And again, I'm running this with a injector it's because I'm actually using Cat5 to feed this enclosure. So I can like run light loads on it, no problem. But you know, for many of you guys, it might just be better off just to feed that with your 48 volt DC plant. And if you wanna know how to do a 48 volt DC plant, which is the proper plant for telecom, uh, check out my YouTube channel. And I did one with an ALG com uh, 10 amp UPS module, and it works great. You can even use um, ICT, you can use Meanwhile, you can use um, LTech. There's tons of different 48 volt manufacturers out there. That's the best way to run your plant. Alternatively, you can run your entire plant on 24 volts DC, especially with this. Just simply plug in right there directly. Um, now, the only time that you want to run straight up 24 volt is if you're literally only using ubiquity equipment like prisms and things like that. Once you start adding Air Fiber 5X HDs or Air Fiber 24s, you really do kind of need that four pair of power to power the devices properly. Of course, alternatively with the 5X HD, you can run it on LV at 48 volts very happily. And I know a lot of guys are claiming that they can run them on 20, I shouldn't say claiming, are running them on 24 volts uh, LV. The Air Fiber 5X in my experience, all right, 5X HD, um, can crash if you run it at a really high capacity at only 24 volts um, LV. It really does need the extra current. Um, or if you run it hard, maybe it was just the old firmware, it can crash. So there's your little video for today. And <clears throat> I'll quickly edit this tonight. And then I'm really, really hoping to get to finishing off the ALG com story arc in the next you know, a couple of weeks. It's been months. I'm sorry, but um, I need to get that uh, instructions uh, video for you guys to set up Dude and Zavix to monitor the power on that um, power supply. And then I've got a bunch of other stuff for you guys too. I've got um, uh, OSPF tutorial coming up, MPLS, VPLS coming up, um, LDP, all sorts of fun videos I'm going to do for you guys. So have a great day and bye. 
Alright, hello everybody. As you saw in the first little clip of video that I made using my cellular phone, uh, <clears throat> you can easily adapt the uh, Microtech crs 1128 p as a PoE switch. The catch is, is that it doesn't support VH. It's still only two pair power. But for most applications, that will be okay. Um, of course, in some situations, depending on what you're using, your devices will actually need a DC, uh, DC feeder anyway. So, I just wanted to show you some of the inner workings of the crs 1128 p because it doesn't run Switch OS. It runs Router OS. But, look at all the extra stuff it has in here. So first, I'm going to show you the power. So in here, if we go to Health, you'll see that you can see the voltage on both rails. So there is an answer to many people's questions. Um, this one right here allows you to see what's going on on the 24 volt side and the high voltage side, the 48 volt. Now, because I've got this coming from a rectifier inside, as you saw, uh, we're running 54.4 straight out over the um, uh, Cat5 to the uh, box. So that's why you're seeing that. Now, people have been asking about VLANs. You can do your basic software VLANs on this thing, but it's going to be a little dirty. Um, it's not the best way to do it. So I'll give you a quick and dirty rundown of how to do basic VLANs on this thing. So this is how you do hardware VLANs on a Microtech. So any of the VLANs that you're going to put into um, the bridge or you're going to tag to ports, you cannot have present in the interface list. Otherwise, they will not work. Uh, I'm going to be doing an in-depth video on hardware VLANs when I actually myself understand them 100% and get good at them. So, here's what you do. First of all, you need your bridge. So you create your bridge here. Sorry, we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's our bridge. So we've got our last mile bridge, which all the stuff resides in. That's where all of our ports are. So as you see, all the ports for the switch are in here, including our trunk port, which is SFP12, gateway 0. It's, I'm using an RJ45 SFP transceiver in it. So now, here's how you do the VLANs. First, you simply go to VLANs and you create them. So VLAN 1001 is a management VLAN in this case. All right. So this is part of my demo network. So I really don't care if people see this stuff. So say all you want. This is to help you guys, okay? If I'm taking a risk here for you. So you're still going to use the bridge because everything's residing in that bridge. So we've got our tagged ports here. And because I'm actually doing uh, double tagging on the ports, um, what we've done here is we've got our inbound tag on SFP12 gateway 0, which is simply to grab the tags uh, for 1001 VLAN from the main router. And we don't have anything untagged here, so this is our double tag. So we're double tagged on AP North, AP East, AP South, and AP West. So that means that we've got, we're receiving a tag, so uh, we're tagged out, I guess you could say, on... SFP12 for 1001, which will get picked up by the router, and the tag is also going out on these ports here so that the APs can all pick them up for their management VLANs. All right, so here's the second one right here. This is actually an OSPF point-to-point uh, -point link. So we've got VLAN 102. It's tagged in on uh, SFP12, as you can see, because that's our trunk port, and it's untagged on Ethernet 2. That is an OSPF point-to-point -point link. So there you go, your untagged port and your tagged port, right? And it's actually showing what's active right here. Now, this point-to-point -point is actually offline right now, which is why it's not showing up as current tagged. And now, there's our general uh, VLAN 1, our all-encompassing. And uh, let's see here, we've got VLAN 10, which is another double tag, basically, for admin. And then we've got VLAN 103, which is tagged on the trunk and untagged on <laughs> the ports for my colleague and I, um, plus a management port right there. So um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So that's where you do your tagging and untagging primarily. Hang on to those words. So now we're going to go back over to here to ports. And if you look through here, watch. So you just looked at that one, right? Under general, here's the port. Okay, here's the physical port. But if I click VLAN, note, I've got the VLAN ID in there, and I've got ingress filtering enabled on that, so that VLAN 103 is specifically heading my way. This is the same thing for my colleague. So we've got VLAN 103, again, ingress filtering, and this is on his port. 
And on the other ports, the same sort of deal. So these ones are primarily uh, on the open bridge. So that means that all traffic uh, coming across that port is going to hit all of these APs, but they also receive the tag specifically for the management VLANs. So that's why ingress filtering isn't on and tag stacking is enabled. So that's basically all there is to it. Like, look, there's another one. This is the point to point, right? VLAN 102 ingress filtering. So that will get you up and running. Uh, some of you out there may actually be better with hardware VLANs on MicroTik, but uh, for the most part, I think this is going to uh, help you guys out. So there you go. Now, one final point as well is that because this is a core device, you should also add it to your network management software, be it um, Dude or be it uh, Zabbix or whatever, so you can actually monitor your, your inbound voltage and whatnot. So there you go, guys. There's um, <laughs> This is a good stand-in for a, another very popular brand that is becoming difficult to get repaired and difficult to get your hands on. So thanks, guys, and I hope you have a great night.